We're now going to take a look at a couple of different ways that you can use Python. We're going to look at what's called the Python shell, and we're also going to take a look at the idle environment, which contains a Python shell but allows us to do other things such as edit programs. So I'm, in this case, running under Windows Vista. The different operating systems are going to be similar the only difference is likely going to be how you might start either the Python shell or the idle environment. In Windows Vista, the easiest way, once you've installed Python, of course, is to go to the Start menu and go to the Programs and look for Python 3.1. And under Python 3.1, we can see a number of things. We can see an entry for idle and an entry for what's called Python command line. We're going to start there. Python command line is what's commonly referred to as simply the Python shell. And if I choose that, what I'm going to get is a very, very simple window that contains the Python shell running as a process. You can see this is Python 3.1, final release candidate, and I get these three angle brackets. The Python shell represents the mode in which we interact with the Python programming language. In fact, Python is known as an interactive programming language. What does that mean? An interactive programming language is a language where you enter a command at a prompt. The three angle brackets are known as the prompt. The programming language takes that command and evaluates it, comes up with an answer, comes up with a result, and then, as the third step, prints you that result, shows that result back, and then that sequence cycles again. And so, it's what we commonly think of as being a read, evaluate, print cycle, or looping structure. And that happens over and over and over again. So, for example, from the Python shell, if I say, I would like you to evaluate the expression 2 plus 3, in a sense, that's a command that I'm giving to the Python environment. I'm saying, here is an expression. When I hit enter, Python will take that, evaluate it, figure out that it is the object 5, and then print the object 5, and then give me back the prompt again. So now if I say, OK, I'd like you to perform the command print hello, in this case, print the string hello, when I hit enter, it evaluates that command and returns the result, which is the result of actually performing the print. So within the Python shell, within this interactive environment, we can, in a sense, do the kinds of things we do in normal Python, but we have to do them one step at a time, one command at a time. After every command, we'll get the prompt back, and we perform the next command. So, for example, if I wanted to do a simple iteration uh, for x in the range from 0 to 9, so range 10. This happens to be a multi-line structured statement, and so when I hit return, I'm going to have to do some indentation here, and maybe I say print the value of x and the value of x raised to the second power. When I hit return, it says, do you want to enter anything else? I don't want to, I'm done, and so if I hit return again, it completes the structured statement, and you can see then that the print function happens for 0, then for 1, then for 2, then for 3, and so on. So I end up with this sort of simple table of the integers from 0 to 9, and then the square of those integers following. If I want to now sort of change my mode of thinking and talk about writing complete programs, more than likely it's going to be difficult to write a complete program one statement at a time interactively. The main problem is going to be that I don't have a way to go back to what I have written before, especially if I made a mistake, how can I go back and change it? I have to, in a sense, re-enter all the commands in sequence. And that's where the integrated development environment comes in. So I'm going to close the Python shell and I'm going to go back down, and in this case, I'm going to pick Python 3.1, but I'm going to pick idle. Idle comes with the Python environment, 
And you'll notice that, in a sense, we have the same thing we had before. We have a Python shell. Python 3.1, everything looks the same. Three angle brackets, it's the interactive environment. However, the difference here is pretty substantial because now we have a number of menus available as part of this integrated development environment. Under the file menu, we can do a number of things. In particular, we can create new edit windows. We have a complete editing menu with cut and paste and searching capabilities. We have the ability to restart the shell, that is to completely clean out what was there and start over. Um, we have the ability to run in a simple debugger and we can configure and look at the different windows that we have open and so it really is a comprehensive environment in terms of being able to do Python programming. So what I'm going to do just to show you here that we have the same shell that we had before we can tell it to interactively evaluate 2 plus 3 but what I'd rather do is write a program that I can save and edit and modify and reuse over and over again. So I'm going to say file, create a new window, and when I do this, notice I get an untitled edit window. This window now becomes, in a sense, a place for me to write a complete program. So if I wanted to, I could put the statements that I had before. Um, I could say print the string hello. I can put in a, a blank line to separate and, and give some white space. I can say for x in range 10. And notice that when I hit the enter, the editor knows to indent because this is a structured multi-line statement. I can say print the value of x and the value of x raised to the second power. And I can continue to write code I think that's enough for this example. You'll notice that the menu options that are provided now include a run menu. The run menu says I would like to execute this entire sequence of Python commands all at once. That is I want to in a sense execute these as if they were being entered at the Python shell one at a time. Now before I can do that, I have to save this file. And so I'm going to do a save as. And it's going to ask me where do I want to save it. And just to make life easy, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. And the file name I'm going to give it, uh, it can be anything that I want. Let's call it first program. But here's the special case. We always have to enter Python programs with a .py extension. So we'll save that firstprogram.py. We'll save it to the desktop. And now I can go ahead and run this. And we'll notice that when I run, it goes back to the Python shell and it shows me the result of performing all those statements. And so here's the print of the word hello and here's the iteration from 0 to 9 printing uh, the integer as well as the integer squared. If I go back to the program window now, I can make a change. I could come here and say, let's just make this, instead of range 10, let's make it go range 5. Once I make that change, had I been working at the Python shell, these would have been separate entries. But now, this program can simply be saved. So I can say File Save. And then I can come back up here and run it again. And we'll notice when we go back to the shell now, we get a restart, we get a cleaned out shell, and now the program is executing, but now in the mode that it's only going to go iterating from 0 uh, through 4. Finally, I could come back to this same window again, and I could say, all right, let's change this to say, hello world. Let's change this to go from 0 to 7. And now what you'll notice here is that I'm not going to save this. I'm simply going to go to the Run menu, and I'm going to say Run Module. I get a message then that says I have to save before I can execute. So I don't have to save as a separate step. I can try to run the program. It will then ask me if I want to save. I can say, OK, go ahead and save it. And again, we get this third 
uh, execution. So it's not uncommon that when you're doing Python programming, you open up an editor, you create your program in an edit window, and you run the program multiple times. Each time the shell gets restarted, and you work back and forth between your program window and the Python shell to see where the results are. When you're finished, of course, you can exit out of the idle environment and come back later and write more programs.